to the chats, I would imagine. And you can vote for the player that you want to view going into the next round, or in this case, the first round. It's about to start here on Cobble. Team Liquid versus CLG on their map pick. Absolutely. This is one of those maps as well that I feel fits this style uh, of SIVO, of whereby you get to choose which side you want to go on depending on uh, what your enemy picks in terms of maps. So, Cobblestone is not the kind of map where you're going to have a huge advantage one way or another, in my opinion. Whereas maps like Inferno, that's definitely not the case. So, Cobblestone is going to be very close, I feel. And here we go, straight off the bat. As expected, the CLG are going to be trying to occupy through drop zone. Drop out of there. It's going to be Nitro that's trying to hold down the top bucket. Lands the first couple of shots onto Haze. And then the Nitro comes in as well. Gets an even trade for a few more moments. Tarek is down to very low HP. Finally finished off from the burst fire courtesy from Nitro while the bomb is planted. So this retake is doable. There is a defuse kit on Adren with the smoke. And a Tech 9 in play as well. But look at this position from FNS. He could bag himself a couple frags. It's not the case of the Tech 9. Goes from behind and takes him out. And then Nitro seals it up to oh, get his fourth. Four. And the defuse as well. Liquid win the first round. Yeah, Nitro yesterday was a force to reckon with on that cash uh, game. Uh, Liquid versus threes up. And Nitro going 23 for 10 plus 13. Over 101 average damage per round. And here starting off on the pistol round with a nice 4k. That's got to feel good. And he comes into this one with the Tech 9. Might not even bother to upgrade. Uh, but CLG, of course, getting the bomb down. And... I assume Tarek means mumble. Hopefully his mum is okay. Because <laughs> in America you say mom, right? Like with an Correct. Mom. Right. Yeah, I, I read that. I was like, what? <laughs> is, is that something you'd really want to admit if that Tarek, was Tarek, get off the computer. It's time for dinner. <laughs> Stuck, guys. I've got a mum issue to take care of. <laughs> we all know that Tarek just eats cereal at his computer anyways. He doesn't need to go anywhere. Seems like it has been uh, resolved, whatever the issue was. <laughs> and we are good to go back into the action once more. So no force from CLG. Due to the fact they got that first round a bomb plant, so they want the AK-47s, the smokes, all that good stuff through into round number three. You know by now how a lot of T's will approach uh, the early rounds, at least, when they do lose that first pistol. Elige, though, going to be pushing up. I thought he's actually going to go up onto the B platform, but deciding to actually back on away. Maybe hearing a bit of noise. Here he goes, the MP7 is tailor made for these kind of situations. If he just holds down the trigger, he should bag himself another frag, and indeed he does do so. BDM, last remaining terrorist, but not for too long. Clean sweep by Liquid, keeping all their weapons alive. Yeah, I actually was expecting the triple uh, spray down there with the MP7, but Nitro actually took two of them from afar. Elise does get one $600 kill coming in, but a quick 2-0 for Liquid CLG. Going to go back into some uh, upgraded pistols. Doesn't look like they want to go for the buy round that you'd often see coming on the third after uh, that plant comes down in the first. Instead, we'll just go for Tech 9s again and are going to pull out a bigger round. Uh, so maybe um, really wanting to secure that off on the JDM going into the first rifle here, even on the T side. Pretty interesting, isn't it? Oh, well, let's see if they can get anything done here from CLG. I was personally expecting some weapons to be thrown in the mix here, but clearly wanting a, uh, a healthier, bolstered arsenal to work with. Fugly on Rock is actually going to pull himself back. You can hear noise coming from Rock. That's going to be called across to the team. Crossfire is down. Nitro with two. Make that a third as well. And Hayes, the only player to get an assault rifle kill from CLG that round is finished off to take Liquid to 3-0. So here is the healthy buy-up that they were waiting for. I assume that's with the orb as well. Yeah, that's going to be picked up for CLG. And now is the time they need to start answering back. Um, and yeah, there is the op coming out, so that's what I would have expected to see. JDM can uh, get onto the board with that one. I was actually only Tarek until that last round that had two kills. And Hazed, well, I gotta say, just an honorary mention to his amazingly drawn Pog Champ Steam icon. The thing is, the thing is great. But here we go, into round four. Liege setting up in, uh, you know, under that platform. Adren is actually going to go up and, and go for this boost with the op, but he's got to be careful. Hayes is already pretty far out. Hayes will spot it as, I mean, Adren obviously having to jump onto the head of Liege, so he peeks up a little bit more than he maybe wanted to. So it'll remain five on five with a little over a minute left. Harris yet to find themselves a pick. Yeah, 
Yeah, very slow, steady, as we saw in the previous game between Conquest and Luminosity. But it's it's pretty much what you're expecting from the T side, especially when they're trying to work through drop zone and along. Like you don't want to be really be rushing out too much because it will go into the crosshairs of the CTs, and they know that there is at least an AWP and a couple of assault rifles on there. And of course, some of those MP7s and submachine guns have been traded off into assault rifles themselves. Here we go, the drop is in effect from Tarek. The first casualty is going to be FNS, though, from the hands of Adren, who is on statue, very similar position to what we saw Zero using for Luminosity. Nice shot. There's another two as well, very nicely done by him. Single-handedly almost winning this round. JDM with the AWP, and he's going to do what he can, but that, that was fantastic from Adren. Yeah, very nice op shot. Sends up on the round with three kills, and it's nice to see Adren coming into form with that op. Uh, he's definitely uh, been one to, to be criticized for it a little bit, but of course he was sharing that opting uh, responsibility, also being the IGL, and I think some of that has been... Uh, that load has been lessened a little bit since they've pulled on the coach. Uh, that is GB James, and also picking up some big star power like Hiko, and even Elige. I mean, not the newest addition to the team, but still one of the newer ones. Uh, so they really got that star power going for him right now. And if Adren starts getting that op together, it, th this Team Liquid team is actually going to be terrifying, even on a on an international scale. Yeah, I agree with you. You can definitely want to watch out for here. Seeing Taras just going for the fast push now because they're on pistols. And Elite had enough time to <laughs> actually jump to the top of the wall for a couple of seconds there of the enemy. That's so much time I thought for a second we may see a knife coming in, but instead Liquid just closing it off with style 5-0. Good start for them. But if there's anything that we were taught from that previous best of three, there's always comebacks on the horizon, and CLG could definitely still easily get themselves a bunch of rounds here on the T side. Yeah, you just, I always get a little bit worried. I mean, I think this map does lend itself to the terrorists, uh, able to get up uh, those rounds on the board pretty early and probably win the half or at least keep it very, very close. So that 5-0 is still quite a bit of a lead. Of course, you've just got the pistol round the next two after it, as the terrorists actually did go for two full-on ecos, just some upgraded pistols in them, not going for so much the full armor Tech 9 buy and not having the rifle on the third. So just losing one rifle round, then back into an eco. This is their only the second rifle round, so you don't want to read too much into the 5-0 scoreline. But already on this one, Cutler has gone down, and it's been Adren that has found that opening pick. Opening pick is going to give them so much leeway to try and work through, but the fact that Haze has answered back is pretty crucial for CLG. And see three players coming up now through danger towards long. Adren is there with the AWP. An angle that a lot of Oppers will use. He just flicks downwards there. The unfortunate part, though, for Adren is there are multiple players, and he instantly gets avenged. He goes in a great position to strike. Coming around from behind, just using his game sense to his advantage. One player's on cannon. The next is directly to his right-hand side through the smoke. Here comes the spray. Finally gets it. And then can hide in the smoke until his reload animation is complete. Goes back in for seconds. JDM shuts him down. I think people are probably a bit disappointed with that outcome. JDM, though, is in a two versus one and has been picked off. So regardless, Liquid edge ahead to their 6-0 lead. Yeah, and that's got to hurt. CLG at this point, the max bonus coming in. They're going to be able to go for rifle rounds here. Maybe a Galil to get some full nades on somebody. Or it looks like they're going to just go for... The Tech 9 armor, they're going to take their money down to about, you know, the mid 2Ks. Hayes is going to stay a little bit higher as he had some more in JDM. P250, no armor whatsoever as he wants to pull out an op. So CLG are being very, very frugal about this. They're confident in their rifle rounds. They want to get out to them again. And they're not trying to get too uh, crazy forcing up here in the T side. I mean, at this point, a force up isn't even enough to disrupt the liquid. It won't throw them off of a rifle round, so you can... I mean, the high risk, high reward is kind of factored out right now for CLG, so I agree with the play to go for the save, but it will lead to another round where they get brutalized. 7 0 now for Team Liquid. Watching Hiko is always interesting because the guy has just so much raw game sense. Like, to see where where he aims, like, seemingly just ahead of time when a, when a player is about to peek him, like, he just knows. It's like that sixth sense, you know? It was fun to watch him play, but either way. He's not necessarily been the, the main reason why Liquid are currently 7-0 up. You have a quick check at the scoreboard, that becomes painfully obvious that Nitro is just firing all cylinders. 14 frags in 7 rounds and 3 assists. 
Our guy is lighting up CLG without too many issues. Still plenty of time though for CLG to mount a comeback. I mean, which if they don't, almost all the viewership today has just been so trained to expect. Right, we're all salivating right now with their Pavlovian responses, expecting the comeback based on those first three maps. But will we see it? Hayes maybe going to give it to us. He finds the opening kill onto a liege. JDM's there with the op. He will take down Nitro and another headshot onto Fugly. So four versus two right now. Adren and Hiko, the two to do it. And expect the 2v4 to be easy if this was the last series. And well, maybe it will be again. Hiko moves in, will find Finesse just like that. Takes him out of drop. Adren nearly missing that shot, but finishes it off with the Monkey Business 5 7. Spots another man back there in KFC. That's Cutler. He will bring down Adren with the AK, and Hiko now moving in. Spots one. Knows where they both are right now, but he's got to go in, and it is Hiko. He is capable of ridiculous things, inhuman Ooh. things, one might say. He's going to switch through the op, and he gets it through the boards. The 2v4s are real today. If only we had Anders here. Oh. Are you we'll kidding we'll, me? We'll ring him up. Sure. I'll try and uh, get his contact number just for that moment. What a play, though. That was ridiculous. And that's that goes back to what I said before about the game sense. He knows roughly where the last player probably is. He's got the wall bang down to perfection. What a shot. 8-0. And the other thing as well, not only is that a round win, but how demoralizing, how depressing must yeah, that, that hurt. be for CLG? Like, you're in a 2v1, you're thinking, we got this in the bag, boys. Oh, I just got smashed through the, uh, the wooden doors. Brilliant. 10 out of 10. Like, it's just got to wreck your confidence. Oh, Hayes going to try to work past this. Looks like it is. Uh, has been Hayes' responsibility to be the one man to kind of work off this B platform and, and try to find the opening picks. But look at Elise positioning himself so nicely. Will spot the top of Hayes. Tries to give up a haircut, but it won't actually work. And Elise will fall for it. Now it's going to be up to Adren. Hits a nice shot onto Hayes. JDM is looking for him and will connect. So the op battle goes the way of JDM. And it's a four on three. Once again, men advantage for CLG. Can they hold on to it? And there it goes. Three to three. Tarek with another. Nitro now has the rock spraying down. Can't find either of those frags. It's Finesse to get the kill. And Finesse still positioned at the rock, holding off Pico, who's, you know, on for another attempt at a ridiculous play. It would be the one versus three, now down to a one versus two. That didn't pan out. But I get what he again. was maybe going for, trying to flash over the wall. Either way, he's worked himself out to the rock. Yep. This for me is a harder clutch off the positions of the two Tarek. There's the first one, man. I was getting a bit scared there for CLG, but they finally have picked themselves up around. And maybe this is the moment they start to, to come back into this game. Easy rebuy from Illiquid. Of course, they just got eight rounds in a row. You're expecting this, including an AWP pickup as well. It's important for CLG they keep this going. Because if they don't, they're back onto an eco force by scenario, and things can go from bad to pretty much a catastrophe. So you've got to start picking some rounds up right here, right now. You up the uh, Van Halen. Nice. Should have had it ready, but that's that's my bad. Uh, four players over towards the B site. Here, four Team Liquid. Now we'll start sliding away. There's the boost. I was like, actually, I thought I saw four, then I couldn't find it. They were boosted up there, and Elysia will find the opening. Hiko to shut down uh, Tarek over that headshot ledge. Can't quite finish off Finesse, though. It brings down Hiko, and that opens up the A site. Bomb still kind of down there in open water. Tarek's not even quite worried about it yet. They want to try to equalize things three on three, and Finesse unable to do so. He falls to Elysia over towards the vent room. And JDM makes his way into the site. Cutler is there. So the plant will go down. Cutler hoping to catch one coming through the doors, but it's just a second too late. Now Adren throwing the ball tops off into the site and going to hit the off shot. JDM gets one, but then burns alive. So Adren with a nice uh, double kill there. This, this is the exact, the exact position that I was hoping from a neutral perspective we wouldn't see CLG in because now that's just destroyed. That is neutered there. Brown loss bonus, and we're, we're seeing them in an eco. So you're looking at the L... Uh, I was going to say LG. Nope, that's that's definitely not luminosity. See, this is how fried my brain I mean, is at this point. I mean, to be fair, you're only one letter off. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is where Team Liquid are going to be able to extend their lead even further, or so you'd expect. So CLG now, they're up against the ropes. Like, yes, it's early on the, the map. There's only 11 out of 30 potential rounds been played. But... 
a 9-1 deficit looking like a 10-1 deficit on CT side of Cobblestone. This is not this CT side of this map. It just is. And we're seeing the spray down in effect as a spectre. Leech has got himself three frags, actually. He's putting money in the bank, padding those stats. And Tartlap is going to follow suit as well. It's all an FNS. He can't do anything. 10-1. And judging from the previous results, I thought this would be a really close map, but so far Liquid have just been bossing it. That they have. Uh, Liquid, uh, right uh, initially when they added Hiko, they picked up the coach, James. They weren't faring you know, as well as people might have expected right away, but clearly they've put in the work because they've been uh, on a tear the last couple days in, in their in their matches. And, I mean, beating CLG, that's obviously the, the local competition, right? Just stopping them right now 10 to 1. And another rifle round for CLG, this... Uh, I mean, one of few chances left in this half to really make a stand for themselves. So, you gotta win this one. Once again, Hades will go off that smoke, try to work his way onto the platform. Nades Molotov's coming his way. Now he's been spotted. They know exactly what he's up to, but it's a hard shot here for a liege. And Hayes now back at that enclave. The Taz spot, I know, as we like to call it, Meadows. Taking some damage and sliding his way back into the safety of those B halls. There I do. I haven't actually seen VP play Cobblestone in a little while, so I'm not sure if he still plays it, but at one point he was there all the time. It's so difficult to, to flush him out of there. But, that being said, let's jump back into the action as Nitro has picked up his 17th frag. He will be taken out, though. Cut down in his prime from the terrorist. This is looking much healthier, much better from CLG. Hiko again is the last one standing. Going for the pre-fire through the smoke just in case one of those players did move across to the back of the site. But he is being spammed now through the smoke himself, courtesy of Hayes. Very difficult retake scenario for Hiko. Valiant attempt, but he will get dropped. And CLG pick up their second round. Yeah, and uh, Dren's been really, really good from behind the statue on the B site. Hitting those op shots, pretty much always good for one. A lot of times getting two kills from there. Uh, finally, CLG, maybe even maybe even could just call it a lucky break. Like, a Dren just misses a shot. Not that they're super easy to hit, but he has been hitting them. It was stopping CLG in their tracks. This time... They do get out onto the bomb site with their numbers. They don't allow a 2v4 retake to happen, and they get another round. So that's going to be big. A second round and another chance at a full-on rifle round for them. But of course, the Liquid winning so often, and keeping three and four people alive in round 10 and 11, they're good enough for another rifle round here. CLG can win this. They can get some free rounds and maybe kind of salvage this uh, coming out uh, with five, at least four. Still, I'm still not entirely sold on the idea that five rounds would be enough for CLG, though. I mean, I, I want to be optimistic and stuff, but, but well, let's just see. Let's just carry on with the action and see what happens here. Because even to get to five rounds is going to be a tough ask from this point. Liquid have been on point on their CT side. Just smashing this one. Bugly in a good position behind the trucks. Picked up one. Has no movement to his left hand side. At least the crossfire is down so they can get the avenging frag. And look where the bomb has been dropped as well. This is so it's difficult for the spot. terrorists to get on. It's like, honestly one of the worst positions it could be in. There's multiple angles that you have to watch when you go across to that site. So I think for a case right now, CLG are playing playing this one right. They're waiting for a potential pick. If they can get two picks, they can maybe push onto that bomb, reclaim it, and go for the bomb plan. As a 42, though, it's not looking good. And there is Hiko, forever in the right place. The double spray down comes in to effect. Liquid take their 11th round. And CLG are crumbling here. And they're not going to be able to get a decent buy up this round either. No, and they probably don't want to force going at the last. They'd have, okay, well, I guess at this point they're just going to go for the force. Uh, what's the bonus? I mean, they just reset, right? They're going to go into this last round and, and not really be able to put together anything. I thought they might want to just go upgrade to pistols and have a full rifle on the next, but instead they'll go for some pistols, armor, utility, and AK out there on Tarek. So that's always got to be something in the back of your mind. Tarek could get it done. But not giving CLG too many, uh, too much of a good chance uh, to get any more than two rounds. The fact that Adrian or Adrian has already started off with a pick, Nitro as well, leaving it into a four on three, and we know that it'll be a lesser buy than this coming out for CLG in the next round. But even still, three on three. As Tarek with the AK, good for two. Now has fallen. Hayes with a nice shot will bring down Fugly. Well, I'm not yet planted, but going to be going down pretty soon. Oh. Oh, that my was goodness. downtown. <laughs> Football season has just started here in America, and Adren throwing touchdown passes already. I was going to go for a different spot. I was going to say that was a three-pointer and a half there, uh, but both viable options. Adren's been caught. Oh, Hiko very nearly gets the Avenging Frag, but not quite able. He's going to call it, and he still gets the kill, and will be able to defuse this bomb as well, and Hiko again gets a clutch for Liquid and takes us to 12-2. This is quickly getting out of hand.
CLG on their team side would have been hoping, I would say, for at least seven rounds here. And instead, they could be coming away with just two. And while the previous best of three might have instilled us with a strong belief system in comebacks, I think this might be too much for CLG to mount. Of course, we'll, we'll be able to say a little bit more after the pistol in the second half, but coming into this, yeah, no rifle this time. More nades than I even would have thought possible. Uh, but the Tech 9's in the armor. Once again, CLG will move out initially towards B. Good, they can't get done. That nade hurts quite a bit. Fugly already spraying down Tarek as they try to drop in from the drop room. Nitro there, Elysia up on the tree. Still there and will now just fall. Is waiting for Cutler, who does only have 8 HP. Finesse around the other side of the rectangle will actually get that kill. So another 2 on 2 situation, but look at the bomb! And Adren, yeah, I don't know if he realized or just wanted to push aggressive through that window anyways, has certainly found the bomb now. And that puts F and S in a very difficult position, 1 on 2. It does. Caught in a rock and a hard place, see what I did there. Worst pun of you. I'll see Not myself bad. out. He is the last player anyway, 55 seconds on the timer, so that's a, a bit of respite for him. In the sense, he doesn't have to rush in. He can take his time here, try and get to that bomb. And judging from the CT's positions, I don't think they realize it's here. So he is going to be able to pick this up. He's checking every single corner. Of course, this is the luxury that time gives you. This will be heard from Adrian. He's there with the prime position and ready. 13-2. And it's kind of anticlimactic because we just casted the most epic best of three. So to have a 13-2 half is like a bit deflating. I'm sure it is for CLG as well, in fairness. They're like, oh, God. Yeah, that's got it. I mean, this is their map pick, too, right? I mean, they had such a dominant performance over Liquid just a few days ago in the PGL uh, to win 16-4 on this map. And now to possibly lose, I mean, it could actually very likely be 16 for Liquid, 4 for CLG, but there's a chance that CLG maybe doesn't even get another round. 13-2 halves generally don't end very well for the team that is trailing. I mean, the pistol round decides everything here for Team Liquid. I mean, and they're put in this position, right? Most teams generally have uh, some pistol rounds. Maybe there's a really solid pistol round that works. You don't want to use it too many times because then teams will get used to it. Like, Team Liquid very well could just pull out their, their most complex, their flashiest pistol strat and just shut this down. Or, you know, they could also not worry about that. They don't need to rub salt in the wounds of CLG with a massive victory. They could just I'll play it simple and, and get through three rounds. Well, I think the issue now for CLG is like we can theory craft and, and discuss like what they have to do to get back into this, but if they don't win the pistol, it's all for naught, right? Like they have to win fourteen rounds. Yeah, exactly. No so, theory about that. It's pretty much pistol or bust is the situation they're in. Now they're on the, the C T side. They only have one USP. I was about to say like C T side, USP's amazing. Well, I mean P two thousand's not terrible. They have a five seven as well. But I feel like on T sides of Cobblestone, the Glock is, is kind of fortunate in the sense that if you're going to have five players rushing down the likes of Drop Zone or through Long B, Terrorists should have the advantage. So I'm a bit worried here for CLG. If they don't win this pistol, we're moving to that second map. And we're probably moving there pretty fast as well. And they've lost the first player. They have answered back though. JDM with two frags. And there's many seconds, but he's been silenced three on three. At least Tarek is still back here around Coop. And he's able to, to try and lay down some hurt. Oh, he's just been picked off on the cross. These are good frags for CLG. It's all on Hiko. With the Glock, he's tapping across the bombs in front of him, but he can't afford to push up. They switch to the 5-7. This gives him a bit more firepower. But that's a beautiful one-tap from Cutler. And there we go. That first box has been ticked from CLG, but that's just the start of a very grueling, very long journey to getting back onto this map. Yeah, and I wonder, I mean, Team Liquid with not planting the bomb there, and of course some of the rounds to work with will, of course, go in for the big force buy, and even that's still going to be a bit dangerous. CLG dealing with it, though. Look at this. I mean, you got a Shaka coming in on Hades, you got two P90s on Cutler and JDM, and then the FAMAS for Tarek and Finesse to, to hold off at, at range a little bit longer. So they're very prepared to stop this. And Nitro once again, once again going to go into the top. Well, she almost kills Finesse. JDM there is good for two. And almost there, Cutler with his P90. And now Hayes stopping him in, in their tracks with the stopping power of the Nova. 100 bucks for these frags. But Hiko quickly taking his head off. Won't let him get another one. He'd like to do some damage here. He'll pick up the shotgun for himself. Ah, but gets caught with the smoke out. 
Yeah, unfortunate. I think he saw his opportunity to maybe smoke the doors and try and push through and, and cause some havoc with the P90 or the, the Nova or whatever he actually ended up having there. I didn't quite catch it, but yeah, just caught now. In transition, Team Liquid is completely cool with this. It's still got a massive round buffer. They don't have to worry about forcing. They can just save. They can wait until they've got enough funds to get a healthy buy-in. All the pressure is firmly on CLG right now. Just one P250 in play on Hiko before Liquid. Looks like they're going to be snaking their way through Long B towards the platform. In actual fact, maybe double-checking that and going for drop instead. Either way, though, like whichever way you look at this, CLG with the weapon advantage they have, this this has 13.5 written all over it. And if they lose more than one weapon, I think they'll be bitterly disappointed. This should be a blowout round, to be fair. Yep, just trying to uh, jump off this platform as fast as possible. Maybe get the bomb down in confusion, but Tarek from the back of the site will not be confused. He's going to bring down one. Now JDM moving closer and spraying. Nice. a headshot under Nitro jumping across. And uh, that was a four-man spray down. Fifth bullets. Easy for JDM. Yeah, very easy, but here come the AKs. If you look the way that CLG have been setting up so far, it's been pretty solid. Obviously, you can't take too much away from it with it being just the pistol in the subsequent rounds. This is going to be the first test. This is where we're going to see what CLG are made of on their CT side of Cobblestone. More than enough smokes, four in total for Liquid. And if they do want to push onto this B-side, it should be easy enough for them to do so. This is something we didn't see Luminosity doing, just to, to bring us back to that previous best of three. That was smoking and then pushing on platform afterwards. They were very passive waiting back. So what a leech could end up doing here, if his anti fragging's on point, is pick up frags. That's not going to be the case. Tarek is there to meet him. And doing so, that puts Liquid well and truly on the back foot. So we're seeing a pretty solid hold thus far. Fogley, though, will answer back. Are they going to expect the player down to their left-hand side, which is JDM with the P90? This actually is actually a P90. He can shine it, but Nitro gets the kill. And then the second as well to FNS opens up the bomb site. It's right for the taking. It will be planted on a liquid. Oh, looking good. And I don't think that CLG want to even contend this with their 2M4s. They're going to save up. And out of nowhere, Nitro just sets it on fire once again. 22 for 10. What an absolute beast he's been so far. Yeah, it seems like that round was going to go the way of CLG. Tarek had a very nice shot to take down Elyse, but then Nitro just hitting the, the double entries there. And Fugly, of course, getting one now. Cutler and Hayes off to save. What is the money situation actually looking like over there for CLG? And JDM is rich, because of course, I mean, you take a bit of a risk there. I'm all for the P90s and rifle rounds, but when the rifle rounds like this are always going to be so important, I think it is maybe a little too risky to keep the P90 in play. Granted, it wouldn't have changed uh, the outcome had he played that same position, but maybe with a rifle, you wouldn't have pushed in under the platform. And too many variables to really tell, but I mean, the reasoning behind it is even though he goes down, he's still good for the op here going into round 20, but uh, having lost that CLG, you put their backs firmly up against the wall. No more mistakes uh, at this point. That's it. They've got to make every single shot count. Again, they're in that position we spoke about this before in the roller coaster of the previous best of three that being this far behind from a CT's perspective isn't just a case of winning rounds, it's winning them convincingly. And their economy right now is okay. They could afford to lose a weapon or two, but any more than three, and I think they'll be in deep, deep trouble. That's of course on the proviso that they even win oh. the round to start off with. And the fact that Elite gets round the back of Hayes, no one was watching mid. So I, I feel like Hayes overstayed his welcome there. He must realize there's a high probability that he gets pushed from the side. But look at this from FNS. He's came all the way around the back. He's in connector. And he is just waiting. And this is the right play. He's going to wait until they try and maybe re-rotate and catch them in transition. From this point on, CLG should win this round from these positions, in my opinion. They should have this lockdown. Let's see if it pays out for them, though. Yeah, I mean, either way, Finesse, you can catch him on a uh, transition back over the B site. Oh, no, he's going to peek out. He will be good for the one kill, so that'll work out. I was thinking, you know, catch him in transition or be immediately there on the flank. But instead, now CLG are actually a man down. is still alive, just hanging on there in the red. Now we'll go down to Cutler's to Famas. And that smoke there for the connector. They will see Cutler falling back. They know he's going to be there in the back of the site. And they will push up through that Molotov. Fugly only taking one tick, nine damage from that. He won't check the backside, though. JDM in there with the op, and now Adren realizing that they're both over towards A. Very heads up play to run over to B, dropping that smoke at the doors, and can pretty much plant wherever he wants it. 
this point. I want to hurry up just a little bit. You will be spotted. Vidium coming at him with the pistol on reload. Oh my gosh, those are those clenching moments. Thought Adren was going to be brought down in the back, but now Cutler working his way in with that FAMAS on the other side. Oh, Adren not ready for it, and Cutler's there. Good for the clutch. Two kills for him and another round win for CLG. But can they sustain the losses? Four people went down mm -hmm. here. That's it. That's exactly it. So anything over three, they're going to be struggling, and you can see here in this round, they are going to be able to buy up. But it's more the longer game that I'm talking about here. Like, yes, you can get a couple of rounds, you can get away with it, but when we go towards the 24th kind of round, if they continue to sustain these kind of losses, they're going to be on more max 7s, they're going to be on more 5-7s. We can see here that Tarek is actually on just the pistol. So, this is the, this is the issue for the CT, this is the worry, this is the concern. And that's the round, honestly, as well. It's a 4 on 3 they had great positions, but to go down to a 1-on-1, one -on -one, I mean, that's, that's almost unforgivable from CLG's perspective. Like, they only just scraped by with that victory. I think it was FNS that went to peak, and he just peaked a bit too wide, he got caught. I can kind of yeah. understand he wants the information. There's a way to actually rotate without him knowing, as long as they don't come through the connector aspect to go the long way around through mid. And that's what he was worried about, but just unfortunate timing from him. And you can see Tarek there on the 5-7, but I guess it does match up equally uh, onto the other team with Nitro with just a Tech-9. Both those pistols are, are pretty much the same. They're fantastic. They can still be very, very deadly. Oh, but look at Elyse opening up. CLG's uh, JDM taken off of that tree boost. And Nitro moving forward. We'll find Finesse. Finesse trying to get in front of that smoke on that side of the rectangle. A bit too uh, aggressive of a play to have made right there. Tarek with the op. We'll find another kill. That's it. It'll be Hiko and Elyse to stay alive. Elyse with a nice 3k on the round. That's 15 to 6. Match point for Team Liquid. Now, th for those of you that are asking in chat whose map choice this is, it's CLG's. So, yeah, it's not looking too fantastic, uh, really. Next map is Overpass. Both teams have a pretty decent record on Overpass, and they've played three times over the last couple weeks, and they've all been close. 16 14, 16 13 kind of score lines. So, overpass should be a real close confrontation. But we thought the same of Cobblestone, right? And it's it's been anything but close. It's been an absolute shutout performance. Eco will finally get that kill onto Hayes, who tries to peek, get some info through mid with the smoke. And this is shaping up to be a very convincing, very comfortable victory for Liquid. Yeah, and that hurts to have Hayes go down first, but of course you got these pistols, you got this armor, you want to try to get out, get a little bit aggressive, try to find an early kill, maybe get a gun if you're you know, really fortunate, but at least to kill all the man advantage, keep the terrorists on their toes, but Hayes will go down, and I mean, maybe a bit of luck there from uh, Hiko, you heard him spraying, and he gets him on the last couple bullets out of that AK, but Hayes is down, and now once again, lift but with their eyes trained over here towards the B site, lurking around in the backside is going to be Hiko, so he's relying on the rest of his teammates to open up their two side against the pistols. Fugly gonna push through the smoke, dink immediately, but he will get the kill down onto JDM. He will indeed. So that Do you have it in the back pocket? No, he doesn't. 16-6. Very one-sided map between these two that we thought would be a lot closer. And that's gotta send CLG reeling somewhat because this being their choice of map, they'd have been fancying themselves to take that. Instead, we moved to Overpass and 1-0 and a very, very quick map as well. I mean, that felt like a breeze compared to what we've casted tonight, Joey. It was over a lot faster. Yeah, it was. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what to do with all this free time now that oh, right. uh, a game has ended 16-6. to But what we will do, guys, we'll throw it to a quick break again. A shout-out to iBuy Power for putting on the tournament with the iBuy Power Fall Invitational. Thanks also to Asus, Microsoft, Intel, Western Digital, and EVGA. Uh, sponsors of the tournament and uh, they've all put some of their great products into the first place prize in the I Buy Power giveaway. First place gaming desktop, second place gaming laptop, third place some computer parts. So make sure to get involved in that giveaway. We'll look for the links below the stream, look for the links in chat. And those of you that are more adventurous, you can find it on your own using the power of Google. Uh, but thanks for watching, guys. We'll take a quick break and we got Overpass, the pick of Team Liquid, coming up next. Stay tuned. <laughs> 